Acharya, this is how you will be receiving lectures in uh, your place. So, we are actually connected this laptop using a plain data card to the AVU server as if I am connecting from outside and this is the reception I will get. And this is equal to the right hand side which was minus the pressure gradient plus mu times this turns out to be the Laplacian of um, presently what we are writing here is of course the non-conservative form but uh, in fact what happens is uh, many times the non-conservative form is easy to manipulate when it comes to some of the analytical solutions that we will work out later um, perhaps uh, most likely tomorrow morning. However, when it comes to the uh, CFD applications especially for finite volume techniques the conservative uh, uh, forms of equation turn out to be uh, more useful. So, e either way what I have done let me switch back to the to the document, the slides. What I have written here is uh, on the left hand side the non-conservative form which I had just written explicitly on the whiteboard a minute back. The middle part is essentially the same as the left part, however written in conservative form and the right hand side is again the various types of forces acting in the fluid which comes out to be pressure forces, the viscous forces these two terms and the body force. Now again please remember that this is a differential equation. So, as with all differential equations this equation is also on a per unit volume basis. So, in that sense this minus dp dx is to be interpreted as the net pressure gradient in the x direction on a per unit volume basis. The next two terms together can be considered as the net viscous force on a per unit volume basis and rho times g x will be the net body force in the x direction all these are in the x direction of course on a per unit volume basis. Similarly, the generalized vector form which is written analogously from the above equation is also on a per unit volume basis. So, this so second term on the right hand side. So, this is how your participants will be able to see the lecture. Occasionally when the teacher is not concentrating on the slide, the full view of the teacher will be visible that is controlled from this end during the transmission. But ordinarily a teacher uh, including the uh, body language, gestures, etc., will be visible in a con. This is one of the reasons why uh, your uh, auditorium should be such that even a person sitting in the corner should be able to see this clearly. So, an adequate luminosity projector and a fairly large screen would be adequate for this purpose. Uh, what you see on the left hand side is what is available as a list of all users. So, ordinarily all your uh, remote center names will appear on the left hand side. So, what happens is you see the question mark there. This question mark means somebody from the remote center has requested for an interaction. So, some one of the participants has a question and the coordinator has pressed some button on the AVU which you will be doing at your stay, your end and that comes as a question mark. Now, like in a classroom, if you are a teacher and if there are five people raise hands, you may still want to continue completing whatever explanation you are giving and at an appropriate time, you will ask one of the students to ask a question. In exactly a similar fashion, the teacher can go to any one of these question mark thing, but since the person is not present physically, that person may not know that he or she is being selected or that remote center is being selected. The usual protocol followed by the teachers here is there is a question from such and such remote center. Now we will go over to that remote center and over to you. Now the moment we say over to you, he will click here and that remote center video will be available on the screen to all others including the teachers. So we will see that when he starts the interaction, 
you're supposed to start at 12 o'clock. But as happens with all teachers, uh, you fall in love with your own voice and continue explaining a little bit more. And uh, the sense of time is sometimes lost. Uh, uh, we had requested two of our colleagues, uh, Professor Bapat was the earlier head of uh, mechanical engineering department. So he is at VNIT Surat and we had requested him to interact from Surat. Uh, there are about 1400 participants. So we are waiting for him to start the interaction so you can have a glimpse of how the interaction will happen at your remote centers. There is, uh, there is going to be an interaction with one of the centers. So I will request the other stand centers to stand by. Hopefully we will be back in about uh, 10 minutes and we will try to complete this session at 12.30 as, uh, as scheduled. Uh, SVNIT Surat, uh, are you able to see us and hear us? Right, thank you very much. Professor Puranik, <coughs> can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, the, the reception here is fantastic and I could attend your lecture for five minutes and it was excellent. The slides are very, very nice and I could see in the center a lot of seriousness over here when I came here. There are around 30, 30 to 35 participants at this place and the facilities are wonderful. So I heard from most of them, I mean I talked to one of the persons outside and he had given a very, very positive feedback. However, just to listen from them, I would like to ask a few questions to a few participants who would like to give us some feedback because this course is taken very, very seriously at IIT Bombay. Professor Puranik and Professor Atul Sharma have really worked very hard to prepare for this uh, course and any feedback from you to them right now because it's just two days that this workshop has started. So any feedback, feedback from you will be very, very important and beneficial for them in, in order to improve something for the next 10 days. So I would request one or two participants to tell us something about if you, if everything is okay or if you feel that something could be, you know, change or something like that. Can I talk? Please tell. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, myself, uh, Vikram Rathod. Uh, I teach fluid mechanics uh, since last few years. Uh, I'm very happy with the content first, lecture delivery, speed of the talk, uh, and the explanation is also done, is also very, very good. The approach, uh, how uh, we should also teach to students, that also we've got. Uh, some of the body language also, how uh, you are explaining, that is also very, very nice. So in total, it's a really excellent uh, lecture delivery as far as the uh, computational fluid dynamics is concerned. Thank you, sir. I'm just very curious to know because this course is mostly mathematical course. Are most of you taking notes down here or you are sort of depending on the PPTs that will be given to you or that will be available? Can you write down with the speed uh, with which he is presenting, however? Right, very good. So, you are, most of you are taking notes and uh, writing down things also. Very good, very good. Can uh, can one of the ladies give a feedback because you are in minority here? Myself, Rasmi Keshwani. I am coming from Skate, Surat. Uh, I belong to mathematics. Uh, actually, I have joined this course uh, thinking that uh, I must be aware how in mechanics they are using. So I want, uh, actually I want to learn something about mechanics, but uh, uh, it is, uh, the lectures are very nice. The sir is going very, very well, but for our side, from, from our side, uh, I don't know many of basic definitions. And uh, unless I know definition, how can I, so it would be better that some terms are explained in beginning or some messages given that before you come to this course you have to cover these uh, topics so then uh, it could be done and secondly uh, it would be better if some uh, tutors, uh, tutors are given first I can practice over something then I will like to appear for test 
in a very means one and half day still i am not uh, uh, habitual to sit here also so it is very it difficult to appear for test and at this level you can't expect na ke by uh, um, trial and error i select some any hain by trial and error i select some thank you sir Uh, myself uh, Tushar P. Gundaraniya. I am a faculty at Government Engineering College, Surat. Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I feel immensely, immensely lucky that I am able to attend such kind of an programs. The expertise of an IIT, such kind of an expertise, is not available at our local center, but of any other by center, college, there are such excellent program. So I feel myself lucky in that uh, sense. Secondly, the way uh, Professor Puranik explained everything is uh, so nicely. Is going uh, very slowly and explaining every terms. So as by looking at all these PPTs, look like very tough. But once he explained, we came to understand everything. Uh, next, I want to say that uh, where the question and answer session going. If we have our doubts, we can solve. But still, we can learn lot of things from the uh, question asked by the other centers. that is one kind of very good interactive section uh, next thing is that i am teaching uh, fluid mechanics at uh, ug levels usually book we refer we you know we all have this mathematics but the physical significance of all these topics we came to know from here so i say that uh, really is a good sessions and uh, i will be attending such programs in future and i will encourage uh, some other teachers to uh, to attend such kind of in program myself arun kumar h poraniya i am from Applied Mechanics side. I am working as a lecturer in Sikhe Pithawala College of Engineering and Technology, Surat. Also, I am PhD student of this college, SVNIT. My topic is also breeze, and I am also working on CFD, the wind analysis, which is very helpful, which is taking place of wind tunnel analysis, wind tunnel test. So I want to use this CFD in bridge and also in applied mechanics side. So I am trying to get the base for the my PhD topic on CFD, and this is also very helpful to me for PhD. And also I will try to give. this knowledge to the students also i will share this knowledge to our my students of this my college thank you very much well these are some of the feedbacks uh, for professor i think we'll, uh, we'll stop sure, at this uh, stage these are very uh, encouraging uh, words for all of us at iit bombay yeah so let's just analyze these sample feedback that we got uh first let me comment on the technology the view that you could see of the remote center the clarity was dependent on the bandwidth now if i had a larger bandwidth i would have received the same video and audio with much greater clarity that's the reason why we are prescribing a minimum 1 mbps sustained bandwidth and do go back and ask your uh, remote center coordinators or if you yourself are remote center coordinators ask your technical people whether the internet bandwidth coming to your institution is a shared bandwidth or one is to one bandwidth because sometimes people take you for a ride by saying 1 mbps but effective bandwidth available is only 254 kbps 256 kb so just ensure because the clarity is clearly related to bandwidth otherwise in the earlier days when we used avu avu incidentally is a system developed by amrita university who have been our partner in this project uh, and this tool today is matured enough you can see that teacher can write notes teacher can uh, have, uh, have very clear cut uh, uh, slides incidentally the slides are not transmitted as video stream so what happens is the slides are preloaded by the teacher onto the server it can be done even 5 minutes prior to the beginning of the lecture 
and then these slides are transmitted independently to the receiving unit, not as a video thing. And that is why you cannot otherwise get this clarity if you are transmitting a picture. But the teacher is visible, so overall you can see that the effect is almost as if the teacher is standing in front of you and teaching. This interaction is very critical. You would observe one point which one uh, participant made that I learn not only from answers to my questions, but I learn also from answers to somebody else's question. And this is exactly what happens even in a classroom. Someone asks a question, 10 other students who might have the same question lurking in their mind will get an answer. This is the argument I had given to the ministry and to UGC four years ago when they said, how will you scale up? How much interaction will be required? So I told them that interaction requirement does not grow linearly with the number of participants. Because most people would have similar doubts and if one fellow asks a doubt and that doubt is clear, it, it, it is helpful. Additionally, of course, we have chat session which we reserve for the coordinators to send any urgent message. The second point you should have noticed is the lack of audio discipline as I call it. I am sitting at a remote center and I ask a question. Now usually I can, I will know if I am sitting in front of you that you are able to hear me. But I am sitting remotely so I am not sure. So I will say, am I audible? Now by the time he says yes, several seconds are gone. Since I do not hear his yes, immediately I repeat the question, am I audible? Of course you are audible. If you are not audible, you would not be sitting there in the first place. Now this is the discipline that you have to inculcate. You observe that the lady, she started speaking without bothering whether she was audible or not. The protocol here is, once the control goes to you, you should start speaking. If you are not audible, then the teacher will know immediately. And the teacher will signal something like this. You are not audible. So that time we can have a written. Believe me, for every interaction we waste almost half a minute to one minute in just enabling that interaction to speak. This is the delay time. And that is the reason we have deliberately kept our sessions for one and a half hours instead of one hour. Because any interaction, first of all, it will have to be on larger scale and it will have to be extended. But as long as you control this, so please advise all the participants that once you are given a mic, start speaking. If there is a problem, I will tell you. And you should keep watching the teacher whether he is saying thumbs down, in which case you should see whether the mic is switched on or not, etc. The quality of the audio equipment that you have and the video equipment that you have is very vital. This I think will be discussed by my colleague Mr. Sajjan uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, because uh, when you, uh, some people had only webcams and webcams do not give a good quality uh, video feedback. So we are suggesting that you must use at least minimally a handicam. Now that handicam needs to be connected either on a firewire interface or on a special interface which requires a video capture card. Now some people had some problems in getting those video capture cards particularly at remote places. I think he has arranged for some five or six cards if there are emergency requirement at any remote center, we may even consider giving that card tomorrow to interact with him. So you will agree that if A, your audio video infrastructure at your end is good, then you will be able to listen to the lectures the same clarity that as if the person is giving the lecture. B, the upload bandwidth is also important for your center and the particular participant asking the question to be visible to the entire community. You observe, for example, there was a slight darkness when that center was being shown. And that is because there is no front light coming onto those people. Now when the question is being asked, it is useful to switch on the lights in front so that the person is visible. See, to the local people, the person is visible. And that person is interacting with the local people so they know who is asking the question and so on. But the rest of the uh, country does not know that. Third, you will also saw, you also saw with absolute great clarity and very succinctly people were making their observations. I was just analyzing the three observations that were made. There were three people that we heard from these. 
the first person was clearly an accomplished teacher and a researcher and he was giving the feedback from that perspective so he found this was good this was good this was good this was the second person was a mass teacher who was completely at sea and she was effectively shouting at the organizers as to why she is going to be uh, going to have to give a test and how can she give a test without the basic thing that way. now this is the issue of mismatch now you will notice there were several questions should we permit teachers from science colleges should we permit teachers from uh, uh, polytechnic should we permit teachers from management fortunately our subject is a rather broad subject and is applicable to most people but these kind of questions will come believe me that engineering research often has a subtle difference from research in general sciences and certainly research in management but if our topic was not that broad then there could be a problem with some of the participants one most important point she made is that if she was forewarned that before coming to workshop please read this 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 then she could have read it and she would have been better placed please reflect upon this and suggest if we could upload something on the moodle upfront and request the participants to read that and come there is hardly any time for this workshop but since you will be engaged with us over the next 2 3 4 years in different workshops perhaps this kind of feedback between you and us should be a constant thing and a constant interaction the third one you will notice the third person was see every person speaks from one's perspective the lady spoke from her perspective of being a mathematician the first person spoke from being a accomplished teacher and a researcher the third person was a phd student himself observe that 80% of his observations were related to his own phd issues which is natural because every participant is coming for he or she to gain something from that work they are not cared about the general thing there was one more observation i don't remember who made it that this gives an opportunity for iit expertise to be made available to us now this is a bunkum myth which must be demolished very quickly professor puranik and professor atul sharma are the experts they incidentally are in iit bombay today they could have been anywhere that's the point we also need to stress that's why in the t interval when professor joseph uh, joseph right yeah george george sorry professor george when he mentioned that he has been giving lectures on how to do effective teaching because many of the teachers remember we also discussed this and he would like to give some lectures and i said very well we will be arranging a workshop on effective teaching in engineering colleges uh, in december it will be another a 10 day workshop and at that time we would definitely like to invite him to uh, teach the point i am trying to make is that in each of your colleges in some subjects there will be extraordinary expert teachers but they are not visible to others so this is what you know we are talking about pedigree in research journals a plus aa and i said there could be some very poor quality papers in best journals and there could be best papers in some small quality pedigree works like that pedigree is a brand which gives you generalized average conclusions but it does not apply to individuals iit has a brand name and a pedigree and therefore on an average the teachers here are accomplished they are accomplished researchers they are good teachers but i would again emphasize that when he said that we are getting to listen to experts which is good we are very proud that they are in iit but atul sharma and balchandra purani could have been anywhere else in fact before coming to iit they were somewhere else and they were as good that that's the reason why they were perhaps appointed the point i am making is that over the coming years some of your centers have to evolve as nodal centers and then independent hubs okay where you start giving courses and workshops like that funded or non funded but you start giving these lectures and courses to other participants across the country there is no reason why this methodology cannot be adapted to teach students directly okay so these are the possibilities but i hope the the small brief sample of what you will see is good enough to convince you that this method will work okay. this is primarily for the uh, for those uh, coordinators and those centers who are joining us for the first time of course 
there are several who have been participating in, in our venture for quite some time. Let me now switch over to, I am cancelling my lecture on uh, research for product development and interdisciplinary research. I will give live during the main workshop. But I want to talk about Akash tablet project and give a demonstration of the clicker application of which you are so curious tomorrow during that time. So therefore, I am shifting tomorrow's lecture here, which is a very short thing. You are already familiar with this program. So what we generally do is that we do assemble the chat, but chat window we would like to reserve for emergency thing. Please understand that if all questions are bombarded on the chat session from 117 remote centers, and let's say two centers have some emergency problems. Now I will miss out those emergency problems, whosoever teacher is there. Besides, email is accessible by all organizers here, but chat is accessible only to that teacher. So remember if Professor Karmarkar is uh, teaching, then only he can see that chat window at that point. The questions can be posed. In fact, Moodle is the right place. So pose additional questions on Moodle. Please filter them or consolidate them at your level first. When they come here, we'll consolidate them further. So we'll, we'll carry on with